Hey everyone, I'm here today with Heather Talbot, Program Manager of the Trauma Center here at Bryan, and we're super excited. We get to go behind the scenes of the Bryan Trauma Center today and even share how you can save a life. So we remind you just to like our video today, and if you have any questions, you can just post them in the comment section below. So. Let's get started. Yeah. So we're here in the emergency department, which some people also call an ER. So Heather, what happens here in the ER? Awesome. Well, at Bryan Medical Center, we actually have two ERs, uh, Bryan Medical Center East, Bryan Medical Center West. Um, our providers, our physicians, advanced practice providers, as well as the nurses that work in our ERs, they are really able to care for anything that walks through the door. So think of sprained ankles, think of a heart attack, a stroke. They really have the expertise to handle anything. So when a patient comes in for the trauma center, mm -hmm. where do they go? Are they seen in a room like this or are they seen, seen somewhere else? Yeah, for the trauma patients, we have what we call trauma bays and those rooms are much bigger. Do you wanna go see one? Let's go. All right. So when you think of trauma patients, those patients are really what we're thinking um, you know, life and death situations, so not the sprained ankle. Right. So we're thinking the major motor vehicle crashes, uh, maybe more penetrating trauma, so a gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is trauma bay five. This is one of our main trauma bays. And as you can see, it is much larger. Wow. Um, yeah. So why is this room? Why does it have to be so much bigger than the room that we were just in in the ER? Absolutely. When we get a call that we're getting a trauma patient, so it might be from a referral hospital um, outside of Lincoln, or it might be from uh, EMS service, so like Lincoln Fire and Rescue or uh, another EMS service, we activate our trauma team. And what that means is it is providers, so everybody from the trauma surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, could be a cardiac surgeon, a neurosurgeon, we have respiratory therapists that uh, respond, nurses, um, radiology, everybody responds and they're here waiting in the trauma bay before that patient even rolls through the door. So when they do roll through the door, they're here. Yeah, so I'm surrounded by a lot of equipment mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, tell our audience a little bit about what I'm standing by today? Yeah, awesome. Well, one of the key team members that I didn't even uh, mention is a perfusionist. And a lot of times perfusionists are hidden in the operating room supporting our surgeons, um, but we in trauma depend on them. And they are the experts and they run our rapid infuser device. So we might have a patient that um, is suffering from a lot of blood loss. And we are very, very fortunate uh, to have a blood refrigerator in our trauma bay. So again, when that patient um, rolls through the door, we are already prepared and ready to go. Uh, the perfusionist has this rapid infuser uh, primed with the blood. Essentially, we hook them up um, and they can get blood in seconds to minutes. Wow. So if you're just joining us today, I'm with Heather Talbot and we're taking a behind the scenes look of the trauma center here at Bryan. So what about this guy that I'm standing next to? What, awesome. what does this equipment do? Well, essentially this is an ultrasound machine. Okay. Um, a lot of times uh, our trauma patients will go to a CAT scan or a CT scanner. And that would be to diagnose maybe internal bleeding, um, fractured ribs, etc. If the physician is suspecting maybe there's internal bleeding, um, say in the abdomen, and the patient is too unstable to go to radiology, uh, they'll do what we call a FAST exam, which is a focused trauma uh, ultrasound, essentially. They'll just run uh, the wand, which is right here, over that patient's abdomen, see if there's free fluid, and they can take them straight here to the operating room. Awesome. Yeah. And what about behind you here? Let's. Yeah, well, you'll notice we have lots of carts, lots of preparation. Um, this is actually a, a, a chest cart, essentially. So a patient comes in and we're suspecting that they might have a, a pneumothorax or they're gonna need a chest tube. This cart is prepared. It has everything that the provider and the nurses would need to insert that chest tube in, and save that patient's life. So you mentioned before all of the people that mm -hmm. are in this room, and that's why it's so much bigger than the room that we saw in the ER. Mm -hmm. So what is it like in this room when a trauma yeah. patient comes in? Yeah. Well, you know, I like to call it organized chaos. Um, you know, you're, th you're talking 20, 25 people, 
and be, that's before the patient rolls in. Sure. And so every one of those team members, they really know what their job is. And so everybody has a place where they stand. Everybody knows once EMS rolls in with that patient, um, we are quiet for 30 seconds. We wait for EMS to give us a report because that might be critical information that we need to know. Once the patient is transferred over to our care, everybody pitches in and does their part. So you mentioned EMS. What is EMS and their, you talked about their response. So mm -hmm. first, who, who are those people? And then how is that response for trauma different than maybe the response in the ER for somebody who's had a heart attack sure. or a stroke? Sure. Well, EMS would be uh, paramedics, uh, EMTs. So think of Lincoln Fire and Rescue. You would think of in the smaller communities, maybe our volunteer squads. Um, it could be our flight services, uh, Star Care, for example. Okay. Um, you know, the cool thing about trauma is it's different than every other type of medicine, really. Um, you know, you go to a physician's office with a cough, and they diagnose you, and then they treat you. With trauma, we get reports from wherever that patient might be coming from, and we anticipate what kind of injuries that patient's going to have. Uh, there's this thing called the golden hour because if a patient is treated within that first hour, their likelihood of survival increases significantly. So the patient rolls in and we don't necessarily diagnose right away. We start treating because if we waited, the outcome could be not good. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned everybody in the community, mm -hmm. you mentioned even rural community. So what is the impact of the trauma center on our community and even in the region? Awesome. I'm very humbled to stand um, in front of you and the audience and be the program manager at, at Bryan Trauma Center. Um, you know, we have a great legacy here. We were the first American College of Surgeons verified trauma center in the state of Nebraska. Um, we're also the birthplace of advanced trauma life support. And that is a course that is taught worldwide uh, to providers to care for the injured patient. Um, it teaches them the essentials, the basics, uh, the basic assessments to find life-threatening injuries for that patient. Wow, yeah. right here in Nebraska, it's yeah. very cool yeah. um, to think that that was born right here. So we talked a little bit about first responders. Mm -hmm. We know how important they are when they go to the scene of an mm -hmm. accident, but we also know that sometimes community members are actually the first people that are there at the scene of an accident. So what can we do to help save the life of that injured person? Oh, I love that question. So those community members, um, we like to call them immediate responders. Right. Um, because most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, those community members or immediate responders mm -hmm. are first on scene to right. say a car crash. Um, and so we have been teaching at Bryan Trauma Center for the past couple years uh, a free course called Stop the Bleed. It started as a national initiative, now it's a worldwide initiative, and it really is just teaching the basics of uh, teaching citizens, immediate responders uh, that have no medical knowledge, um, the basics of identifying life-threatening bleeding, um, giving them the tools that they need and then empowering them to actually put their hands on somebody before those medical professionals get there and, and save a life. Yeah, so if you're interested in Stop the Bleed, this is actually a free class for anybody in the community and you can learn more at bryanhealth.org slash stop the bleed. Awesome. Yeah. So great class. And just a reminder, we're here today in the Trauma Center with Heather Talbot, program uh, manager of the trauma program yeah. here at Bryan. So now let's just take some time and answer a few questions. Awesome. I've got my I'm phone excited. here. Yes. Um, we'll take some questions for from our audience. And actually, one of the first questions that we have is, how many rooms like this trauma bays do you have mm -hmm. here in the Bryan Trauma Center? So we have uh, Trauma Bay 5 is our main trauma bay. Okay. Um, we also have Trauma Bay 4, which is set up similar, but it's a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, but essentially, we have five trauma bays, but we could take care of a trauma patient anywhere. Sure. You don't have to have a huge amount of space. But again, with trauma patients, we always want to be prepared. And so we're extremely fortunate to have to have this trauma bay and, and ready to go. Yeah. yeah. You know, Heather, what we didn't talk about today, too, is... What about when you get that patient stabilized? We know that's all happening really quick here in the trauma bay and there's a lot of people. So talk a little bit about then 
once you have the patient stabilized, what happens next? Yeah, well, uh, you know, a lot of people think trauma care all happens in the emergency department. And yes, this is the first place of contact for a trauma patient, but we really don't want to stay here very long. Sure. Um, so, you know, the providers and the team, they do that rapid assessment and then they determine, does the patient need to go to CAT scan? Do they need to go to the OR? Or maybe they need to go straight to the ICU. Um, some trauma patients will go to the intensive care unit because they might take 24 to 48 hours to stabilize before they can go to the operating room. Um, you know, being a trauma center, we have to have an operating room 24-7 uh, ready to go. So that's the staff, the physicians, um, anything, it's, it's all ready. So uh, it just really depends on the person. Right. And I think you mentioned too, that that team that comes in, you know, they might be doing other work and they're ready. They yeah. just go, right? Just at the drop of uh, the call when it comes in, right? Yeah. So it's very multidisciplinary. Um, so if you think about our team of phlebotomists that are on, uh, those folks that go around the hospital and draw people's blood to get the lab work, um, there is a phlebotomist today that is assigned to trauma call. Um, he or she will get the trauma page when we get a trauma today, and they essentially, yes, they get the page and they will be here when that trauma patient comes in. So another question, how many patients, trauma patients can you see? I know you talked about the three rooms. Mm -hmm. So is it only three patients? Do you see more than one patient in oh the gosh. room at a time? Yeah. How, what about that? So our trauma center has officially uh, been a trauma center since 1977. Mm -hmm. um, since then, we've you know, saved over 35,000 patients, which is amazing. Um, we can see whatever is sent our way. Um, you know, if we can't handle it, obviously we have amazing partnerships with our, with our Omaha hospitals, Nebraska Medicine, et cetera. Um, but we can really take what we need. We have amazing expertise with our emergency room nurses. We have physicians that are always on call 24 seven, and we have backup physicians that are on call. Uh, great partnerships with our surgeons in the community. Yeah, a good reminder again of uh, the team that it mm -hmm. takes to, to take care of a trauma patient that comes in. Yeah, I always say, you know, the trauma center gets lots of credit for saving that patient, but it truly is the system that yeah. saves, the, saves the patient. Absolutely. Well, if we didn't get to your question today, feel free to post it in the comment section below and we'll have Heather be sure yeah. to answer. Um, well, that's a wrap. Thank you so much, this Heather, awesome. for, Thanks for asking. Um, doing this today. I know I learned a lot and I'm sure our audience did as well. And just um, what a great, uh, just what we have here, right here in Lincoln. It's just a great resource yeah. for everybody. We're so, super fortunate. Yeah. yeah. Well, just remember to like our video and also like the Brian Health Facebook page. Uh, so that way you can be notified when we have more Facebook Live videos in the future. So again, thanks to Heather and thanks to everybody for watching. Have a great day.